The ending of Billion Season 5 did not feel right to me. And from the feedback you gave me, it seems that many of you feel the same. We're looking at ways to end Billion Season 5 differently and to save Axelrod, even if he looks happy to go on a long ski holiday. And when I say saving Axelrod, it's not because he's a nice guy. I mean, he just abandoned his kids, right? But because we deserve better. Season 5 was a succession of bad decisions from Axelrod. We're going to go into each episode and stop the key mistakes so that we can rewrite the ending of the series. So let's rewind the timeline. In the third episode, we can already save him there. Ever get tired of working for a living? You? No. At the point where he says, Until today. That's before he starts talking about the bank. I want to become a bank. What he should say is, I want to go private. And Wag should reply, You have $10 billion in assets. You don't need to collect client fees. You enjoy investing, but you don't want the hassle. Set up a family office. And that's what going private means for many hedge funds. If you're a day trader with an office in your basement, that could potentially be classified as a family office. But when we talk about managing billions, it requires a corporate setup. Although if I was to set up a family office, it would totally look like this with the pool. They can be single family or multi-family offices. The threshold for it to make sense is usually to have over $100 million in assets. The advantage is that compared to other institutions that are pooling third-party capital, the reporting requirements are very light. So what does a family office do? Family offices can be as unique as the families themselves, and they provide many different services to the principals. It's mainly about wealth planning and wealth management, growing the fortune and passing it on. But it can also be dealing with accounting, managing properties, providing lifestyle services and dealing with the charity. You can look at family offices in terms of the risk appetite and their expertise. Some are made to pass on the wealth from generation to generation and are naturally conservative and maybe not very financially inclined. Others could be for first generation entrepreneurs. For example, the Revolut CEO who's just created his own family office. Hedge funds make a very particular type of family office because they are entrepreneurial, risk seeking and highly sophisticated investors. And then there's Axelrod who will be somewhere up there. So how do we transform Axe Capital into a family office? And that's the key. We don't really need to close. We just need to transform. So what would that mean? First, we need to return the funds to the client. So there would be many billions at stake. And there would be a partnership agreement between Axe Capital, the general partner, and its investors or limited partner as a standard. That would include some redemption clause where the fund can return the capital. So that transfer should be fairly smooth. But they would still be open for trading and investing. A family office of that size could easily employ 50 to 100 people. They would reduce the size of the operation, but not fire everyone. The roles could be very similar. May I use the sales, sorry. And there would be people involved in legal, in research, in trading, and a CIO, a chief investment officer. You may not have a dedicated team looking after your wealth, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't think of wealth building. And it's a process that you can start at any point. There's an app that makes it easier, Wealthyhood, the sponsor of today's video. With Wealthyhood, you can be your own wealth manager and invest like the top 1%. It's smart, personalized, commission-free investing. They're in beta, and I'm one of the early users. So if you want to check it out, there's a link to sign up for free and skip the waiting list. Now, back to our hedge funds. The transformation into a family office is actually a fairly common move. Soros did it, Jim Simons, Bluecrest. For some of them, the move was related to legal challenges. This happened to Steve Cohen, the inspiration behind Bobby Axelrod. He closed his fund SAC after an insider trading scandal, then opened Point72 as a family office. And now that enough years have passed, Point72 is transformed again into a firm that can manage outside money. So how does the story end for Bob? We don't have a lot of information on hedge funds after they go private. That's the whole point. Based on what we know, we can see the story ending in two different ways. The first one is a happy ending, like Michael Pallat from Bluecrest. In the world of finance, I'm the highest earning person in the world in finance. Who's been staying under the radar, but he's so happy he can barely contain himself in this video taken from a taxi. So I'm a hedge fund manager and I've transformed my fund into a, a personal investment vehicle because we made such high returns. But 
based on Axelrod characters, it could also end like Archegos. Archegos was the family officer of Bill Huang. Like Axe, Bill had some legal troubles before. He had to pay fines to settle US illegal trading charges, and he was banned from trading in Hong Kong. He still rebuilt a family office. He managed to increase his portfolio to $20 billion and to lose it in just a couple of days. What do you think the future could look like for Axelrod as a family office man? I'll leave my personal thoughts on this in the description below. Next week, we're going further in the timeline and we move on to the next episodes and Axelrod got his bank charter. What can he do from there? I think there's still a way to use that without getting into trouble and in fact, make a lot of money.